mother that goes to today into all of the blood. I plan to make it different from the other one. I promise I'll make a better intro later. This is the intro for the dog of blood. Thunderosa eating taco. bit of, uh, of ego is, is playing a factor with Ms. Gracia there. And oh! Well, certainly Nerdy Bill once oh, more with feeling. All right guys, so I'm back in Kansas City at El Gallo. My The owner is not here, which I'm really sad because she was super dope. But I have somebody who lives here, here in Kansas City, and that is Marty Bell, Marty, welcome to the Taco Hi, Blog. Hi, I'm so excited. You know, there's two things I love is talking and eating. So this is literally perfect. So I love you. this place. This is the first place. <laughs> She's already. <laughs> this is the first place that when I first first got moved here, I knew this was like the place you had to come. That's why I sent you here before because this she did is legit, like authentic, authentic, authentic. Delicious as fuck tacos. Can I curse? Yes, delicious as fuck tacos. And look, like, it's a store too. Yeah. This is like the hat that I wore when I won my championship. But, all right, let me let me get some tacos and set up this thing. So Marty, Marty, tell us about Marty Bell. What do you want to know about Marty Bell? Uh, there's so much. Well, I've known you for a while, yeah. so it's like it's kind of hard to like interview people that you know. Uh, doing Kansas City. So I moved here five years ago. Uh, there was a company called NWL that hired me to be a part of the broadcast team. So I moved here five years ago to do that from Ohio. I was part of the broadcast team. Eventually I was wrestling on the show as well. Uh, I was helping produce. I was doing a little bit of everything. I was hosting the TV show and the company closed. Meow. <laughs> a year and a half in. Yes. And then I stayed here. And then I ended up um, going, literally, I, the company closed in April. In May, I auditioned for Exatron. Yes. In June, uh, no, in May, I got contacted. In June, I auditioned. In July, I left. And so that's actually kind of, I feel like, how we started bonding was because of Exatron. Yeah, I watched on Exatron because Allison was like, hey, they need somebody from Exatron. I think it was like yeah. season two? It was for season two. two. And I knew of you, but I had never met you. And so Allison told me, she was like, oh, I was with, with Thunder in Japan. Mm -hmm. She's awesome, blah, 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 whatever. She's putting you over. And so I was like, their best friend, right, by the fuck way. it, yeah. I mean, if you know Marty Bell, you know how me and Allison Kay are besties. That's just, you know, literally wearing, not just because it's our new merch that's available on MartyBell.com and AllisonKay.com, but because I wanted to make sure she was here so she couldn't be here with us today. So, but yes, um, so yeah, long story short, uh, that's how I ended up here. And then um, I've been here five years. And you do a lot of like what, like modeling, TV. Yeah. I do. Um, I do a lot of work for television, um, especially here in Kansas City. Um, if you live in Kansas City and you watch uh, the Royals game, which is our baseball team here, uh, you work my with team. the Royals? No, I worked with Boulevard Beer with the Tank Seven. Oh, for I was gonna be campaign. like. No. I love baseball. So yeah, I feel like I committed a little bit of a sin. I know. I got cheese on my tacos. It's not a quesadilla, wait. I know. I'm sorry. So you work for the Royals? I don't work for the Royals. I worked, uh, if you watch the games, you might see my face in some commercials before it. Oh, yeah, she's, she's done commercials, too. So yeah, so I worked with on um, Boulevard. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff with like Hallmark. I get people who message me all the time. If you're on the East Coast, people that have seen me on a uh, college commercial. I didn't uh -huh. even go to college. <laughs> oh, that's, I didn't know you didn't go to college. No, I went to acting school. I didn't go to college. I went to an acting conservatory. Where, in, uh, New, in New York? York. Mm -hmm. Yep. I went to AMDA, the American Musical Dramatic Academy. I graduated in 2008 from that. I did that. not know you went to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. knew you did a lot of acting stuff, but I didn't know you graduated. Yeah, no, I'm actually school. like, I'm actually classically trained. I am actually a trained, uh, a trained actor. What the f are you doing wrestling? So, funny enough, um, the reason, so I grew up watching wrestling. I grew up a huge, huge wrestling fan, and you know, like, a lot of kids our age, once you get to like high school, you kind of fall off wrestling. I, when I went to, when I graduated from AMDA, I was looking for casting calls. 
and my room, I didn't even find this one. My roommate at the time, she was like, hey, I know you used to like wrestling. There's this like wrestling thing on Model Mayhem. Like they're looking for like girls. Like, do you want to do it? Do you want to come with me and Model see me? Mayhem. Model Mayhem. Oh, I saw like... the profile on there and I was like, yeah, I used to like wrestling. Sure, why not? So I went down there. Uh, I did one show with them. I was a valet and I just had so much fun. I had so much fucking fun. And then I did another show and another show. And then all of a sudden I was in charge of all the girls. I was the one that was like choosing the girls that we're, what we're gonna be doing and like dressing everybody. And then finally my friends were like, why aren't you training? And I was like, oh, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. Like I'm working yeah. a full-time job. And then I got fired. So I was like, well, I guess I got time now. So that's how I ended up on wrestling. Right. Hey JP, you looking at this? Uh, yep. Sure you seeing you seeing what Simon Miller's saying about you? This Simon Miller. Simon Miller, guy from One Culture Wrestling. Never you hear what he's saying about you? Uh, I've never heard. What do you mean? He's the guy that you're facing on August twentieth. Where? At Mission Pro Wrestling. Simon Miller. Who, who is he? I, I I've never heard of the guy. I'll tell you who Simon Miller is. He's that buff. All Englishmen from across the pond that's trying to challenge America and the Americans and everything that we stand for. He's challenging America. He's challenging America, JP. Those gap tooth Englishmen, they won't get away with this. And we ain't gonna take that, are we? No, we are not. Not, not today. those dang red coats. Mm -mm. No, we're not. Because who are you, JP? Who are you? Hardcore Harlow. Damn right you are. And why is that so important? Because I'm the South Dakota Slammer. Oh, do you? I do you. Damn straight. For America. For America. So you were uh, you were born in New York. New York. Uh huh. So you are a no Dominican origin. I am. Um, how do you call? I how do you call um, your? Because I know uh, Dominican York. Dominican York. Dominican, but you have to say it with the accent. Dominican, Dominican York. York. <laughs> no, you, the K no se pronuncia. Uh, the Dominican, Dominican York. York. Dominican York. Yeah. Dominican York. That's what I am. Um, Dominican York. Como los Puerto Ricans, ¿cómo se llaman ellos? Eh. Por por Puerto Rican. New York. New York. Yes, New York. No, I'm a Dominican York. Um, I was born in New York, and then when I was months old, I moved to the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And then I moved back when I was seven. So from seven to 23, I've lived in New York. So I, I lived in New York most of my life. We were just talking this outside, you know, being Latinas. How difficult has been for you as a, what do you call, Afro-Latina Latina. to be in the business? So a lot of times I don't get recognized for being Latina which I feel like I get that in, in general, mm -hmm. you know, in, in real world too, because I'm darker, because I'm not what a lot of people think a Latina should look like, mm -hmm. you know? We're not, I don't have green eyes, I don't have blonde hair, I don't have light skin. Being a woman in general, obviously, in wrestling has always been tough. Has, have things gotten better? I think so, mm -hmm. than like from when we first started, but we're talking about, you know, 10 years ago being the only girl in the locker room, being the only girl training, being the only girl around. And now I see such a big difference. Like now, I was at Shine the other day and I looked around and I was like, holy sh she's Dominican, she's Dominican, she's Puerto Rican, she's Puerto Rican. And I was like, damn. Like, I do feel like things are changing. I do feel like it's always gonna be a harder battle for us mm -hmm. as women, period, mm -hmm. in, in wrestling or and really in anywhere. We always have to fight double. We always have to prove ourselves more yeah. than any, any guy. But I feel like, I don't know, sometimes, I wonder, like, there are situations where I've been like, I, I mean, I get it with acting a lot too, because I don't look like the typical Latina. Actually, when I was in Mexico, I auditioned for a bunch of stuff and I didn't get anything. And I know that. I know a, a big part of it is Bogosu Morena. I know that that's, I've had to deal with it. I feel like actually, I've had to deal with it so much in, in my, like, outside of wrestling that it doesn't even phase me. Like, it's just what I'm used to. It's just what I've done my entire life. But it's just like, to me, it's just like, 
it's such a battle, you know, and then I'm like, sometimes I feel like I need to fight it all the time. But I guess it's, it's sad because it shouldn't be that way, you know? Yeah. It's just 2022 and, you know, but it is what it is, right? Yes, but I also feel like even without, maybe you don't even notice it, but you're making changes. You're, you're doing shit that nobody's done before. You were the first Mexican-born person or woman to hold the NWA title. Yep. Obviously, the first Mexican-born to hold uh, the AEW title. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're doing. Shit. You're putting your name in history books. And not only that is like the way that I'm coming across when I present myself on on national TV. Who comes out looking the, like the way that I was looking and wore nothing? None of the women that I've seen before. I think it's very important. I feel like we both do it in very different ways, mm -hmm. but I think we both, we're both so proud of where we come from. Yeah. You know, I wear my flag everywhere oh, I go. All the time. I that to that. me is so important. And I have, I've had people who didn't even know where the flag was. You'd be like, oh, where are you from? Or are you from Puerto Rican? <laughs> I was just going to say that. No, I'm not Puerto Rican. No, I'm not Puerto Rican. I love Puerto Ricans, you know. I love Puerto some, Rico. I've got, oh my God, I love Puerto Rico. Oh, my, oh, I can't wait to go. I can't wait to go hang out with Rosa. With the other Rosa <laughs> in Puerto Rico. Like, we are dying to go. It's one of my favorite places I've ever been. So dance. I love to she dance. She actually does a lot of videos for her Patreon, which you guys can subscribe. She's always looking for more subscribers. And it's actually pretty affordable. So yeah. I'm just saying. Yes. Now, I have, um, I have, I, I tried, when I started my, my Patreon, I basically modeled it a lot after Allison's. Allison was the OG of Patreon for she real. Is. She's like the first one that like set the standard and really like taught me how to do it. And so I wanted to make it that it was affordable. There's a $5 option, a $10 option. It goes all the way to $250. I don't expect everyone to pay $250. I do. But if you want, I mean, if you want to, I mean, I'm not going to say no. But you know, like $10 gets you so much access to so much cool stuff. Vlogs, uh, blogs. I'm always writing, you know, any, all these videos on the road and stuff. You get access to that, which is. They, they do a lot of that. I know my stuff is mostly like. All my vlogs are extended vlogs, so like my videos are an hour long when you pay. Like, dude. I mean, we put all. You're, you're getting your money's worth. Oh no, yes. gonna go in the next few years i'm really happy where i am obviously mm -hmm. me and allison are having so much fun together we're having a great time where i feel like we're we're killing it you know we're i feel like we're doing a great job of like bringing female tag team wrestling yes uh which you know both of us love tag team wrestling we've been in in several different tag teams before and this is like i feel like we've really hit our stride i feel like now we are we are fucking ready mm -hmm. and we're really excited we've, we've gotten to do a lot of really cool stuff and there's still i know there's still so much left to do, but yeah, I was with Impact for two years. Um, I left there and then came to NWL. I did the Mae Young Classic. So I worked with WWE. Um, I was at Ring of Honor. You know, we were part of Final Battle, so we were mm -hmm. part of the final uh, Ring of Honor show, uh, official Ring of Honor show. Uh, yeah, I would say we've worked. I mean, I've, I, we have goals of going, I've never gone to Japan, she has, so we have goals of going to Japan together. I want to go to Mexico and I want to work in Mexico so bad. Have you Mexico. worked, have you talked to anybody in Mexico? Not lately, not recently. Um, I love Mexico. If I, do I love Mexico City, right? Yes. Yes. But actually I've had a lot of fun in other places too, but Mexico City, when I was younger, you know, I grew up watching novelas. That's like what got me into acting. La Dramatica. Oh, yo soy <laughs> dramática y novelera. 
And it was um, it was TV Azteca that really like got me. Oh. TV Azteca and Televisa. Actually, actually well, there was more well, Televisa back in the day. Which one was your favorite soap opera? My favorite novela, probably to this day, is Ruby. I have watched Ruby, Ruby, Ruby La Descarada. ¿Quién sabía Ruby? ¿Quién, no. ¿Quién la hizo? Um, Bravara Mori. Oh, she was such a. <laughs> Let me tell you. I don't know. Should I give like this is? I mean, I guess I guess I can talk about it. It's like one of my pre-match rituals. If you ever she, see me, she was such a though. She was I know. so mean, but she was amazing. She's so fucking good. I love when she. And then to Teresa like, was good too. Teresa was like basically the Salma similar Hayek? story. Wait, Salma no. Hayek? No, no, no. Teresa, um, Angelique Boyer, is Teresa. No me acuerdo. Pero si vi la de Ruiz la vi. That Ruiz, one I watched. Ruiz, es que, oh my god. Uh, me and my friend, uh, it, dude, we used to like do like some of the scenes. <laughs> She's almost so with the boop. You know, she was on the Amazing. 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 Oh, so what was your, your I'm sorry. So one of my pre-match rituals, uh -huh. if you were catching for a match, I'll start pacing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start I remember. Singing. Yes. I'm singing the theme song. Oh, so which one was it? Es una descarada, por ser la más hermosa. No tiene casi nada, pero le gusta la vida cara. I can't sing. You're the singer, not me. I'm the singer. Y a mí me gusta ella. Y sé cuánto me ama, sé que sueña conmigo, pero amanece en, en otra, otra cama. cama. <laughs> yeah. El dinero. Oh my God, I love it. That literally was, I'll start pacing and start singing that song. Every match. Wow. Every match. That's how much I love that. Novela. Ruby. Ruby. That's how much I love Mexican soap operas. So when I went to school, when I graduated from acting school, we had to make a five-year plan. And part of my five-year plan was to move to Mexico. ¿Tienes una novela? I want to go to Sea. To the Centro de Entretenimiento Artístico. Was she available, guys? Now, we'll say I reopened because they had closed for a long time and before they had a, they had an age cutoff. But, so, what do you think? Like 24 or some shit. But now they opened it because my friend is there. They, re they opened it and it's like for like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. my friend's doing it right now. She's almost graduated from it. But that was my goal was to move to Mexico and to go be novelas. You know, and when I became a wrestler. You know what I want to do? You, you remember how like all oh, the sport people, or like even Selena, she mm -hmm. made she, she made it. Through. I want to do like a you know pop up in a, in a novella. Oh my god! I, Dude. I, I think it will be great. Me muero. I'll I'll die for you. I'll die for you if that happens. Una escena. Yo soy la que la que tú quieres y nunca lo has dicho a nadie. Todavía aún tengo tus cartas. <laughs> You have, you have no idea how many times I'll be driving and start creating scenes. Actually, that's a goal that I have. I'm going to say it out loud because if I say it out loud, I have to do it. Especially for my Patreons and stuff, for my patrons. I want to start doing more monologues. I want to start putting, doing more of my acting work because I feel like I don't, I really haven't shown a lot of that. So now that we're talking about stories, uh, you and, we're going to get into a story. Uh, you and uh, Alice and Kate, you've known each other for over 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So where is this, like, sister, you know, gonna like, call it bromance when they're, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. friends? But how do you call it, this, like, a sisterhood was created? We said we're soulmates. We always joke about that. We're like, friends can be soulmates, too. Like, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be. Like, wait. Yeah. I don't know. There's not, like, a bromance for girls, I guess. But, yeah, I would definitely say we definitely have a very, very strong female bromance going on right now. Because she, she does jiu-jitsu, and she got you in jiu-jitsu now. Mm -hmm. Well, this bitch is training jiu-jitsu. Are you um, doing the blue belt, like, belt, or are you just doing... Yeah. No, I do both. I train gi and no gi. I mostly, I actually prefer... Gi? Gi. I prefer What's gi. What's wrong with you? Because it's easier to choke people. Not necessarily. Yes, I don't and, know. I don't like it. Yes and no, but I don't know. I just I really like gi. I um I've been because I'm better at gi. I've been pushing myself more to train no gi mm. because I'm like, how else am I gonna get better if I don't do it? So I have been like trying to train more um, no gi and and my game stepped up a little bit, but I'm still more comfortable in the gi. Are you a white belt still? Mm -hmm. Oh, she likes MMA. Tell us about your MMA experience and what you have, you know. All the people you know. She knows all kinds of people. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, so I used to be really close with um, Mas Ciudad. Uh, we met on, on Exatlon. Exatlon. We were on different seasons of um, the show. Uh, sorry, we were on the uh, same season, different um, teams. But we all got really close. 
like, you know, obviously we, uh, we both have a, a passion for uh, punching people in the face. His just hurt a lot more than mine do, a lot. Um, and so we became really good friends on the show. And then afterwards, um, when I went to Mexico, I was in Mexico. Well, no, first we went to his fight. So I was there when he knocked out Askren. With a knee. Uh, in seven flying seconds. Knee. It was like, no, it was like five seconds. Yeah, the flying knee. Really, dude, it was like three seconds. It took the ref longer to get down and stop him than it took him to knock him out. So we were there for that. And then um, I ended up going to Mexico. That was in June, and then I went to Mexico in July. And he hit me up, and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm going to Mexico this week. And he's like, all right, cool. And then came to Mexico. And just came and hung out with us. Um, he was only there for like three days, because he had some stuff to do in, um, in California. But he came and stayed at, um, at our friend um, Jimena's house. And uh, we had a great time. We went to the Grutas, the mm -hmm. Tonantongo, which was so much fun. It was such an incredible trip. It was a long ass fucking trip. It was like four of us sitting in the back like this. It was. The, the ride itself was horrible because it was like four hours from Mexico City. But we had such a good time. Um, we've kind of drifted apart in the last few, um, the last like year or so. But I have so much love and respect for him. Uh, he gave me a lot of really, really valuable lessons. He mm -hmm. taught me a lot, a lot. Like, I feel like after meeting him and after like certain things that we lived through together, that my life kind of changed, like my career changed because my mindset changed. Yeah. And I have him 100% thank for that. Who's another friend that you have that is like that? Um, like in, in general? Mm -hmm. Kingston. I can hate him so much. He's the absolute worst. He is the absolute worst, but I love him so much. How long you guys known each other now? Like mm, probably almost eight or nine years. We met in New York. Um, when I still live there, and I haven't lived in New York in 10 years. So, wow. Yeah, yeah so almost 10 years ago. I've known Kingston for about 10 years. And he is um, the most annoying human being on the planet. I tell him all the time, he's like, he's my brother that I wish, like, actually, this is really fucked up. You know how you're like, oh, you're like the brother I never had? Yeah. I told him, I was like, you're the brother that I, ha I never had that wish had died, or something fucked up. Whatever I said to him was real I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eddie. That was too much. That was too much. But no, um, I love Eddie. Eddie's like that friend that will always check on me. Mm -hmm. And I know he hates when we talk nice about him. He hates that we're like, you know, ruining his image or whatever. But Eddie is a real one. Eddie is one that I know that's a guy who has said our name at, at AW multiple times. Both AK and I. I know that he rides really hard for both of us. And I feel like, you know, friends like that... People who say your name when you're not in the room are the most important people in your life because they're the ones that have your back for real. And Eddie will text us every few weeks. Mm -hmm. You good? That's it. You good? I yeah, you hear, good? I can hear that. Yeah, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm I. Okay, Eddie. <laughs> Talk to you in a few days. So I, I love Eddie a lot. Eddie's definitely one of those people that I know that I can always reach out to no matter what. That always going to be there. Wow, Eddie. I know. I'm ruining your image. I'm so sorry, Eddie. That's all we've been doing lately. We've just been ruining his uh, image. His yeah. Heart. Image. His heart. I mean, he's still hard. Don't get me wrong. He'll still fuck you up. <laughs> he just won't fuck me up, but he will still fuck you up. I, I like, I remember when him and Homes died, we used to sit on the, uh, after the shows in NWA, which was like, shit. Those are really good memories. I had really good memories with, with you, Allison, Ricky, Siki, mm -hmm. all of us when we used to go out and, and just have fun. That was those I definitely, those two seasons were like some of the most memorable things that I have in my career because I feel like we all got along, all of us got along, which is surprising, right? It's crazy to be in a locker room with so many different personalities, so many different levels of experience, levels of what people have done, where they've been, and everybody get along. We all got along and like each other yes and like encourage each other and like want each other to do well yes there was no cattiness there was nope. no fighting there was no like this is my spot this is like or like when somebody needed to put somebody over we were not like no, no. Like, yeah it was like okay okay oh, what's, cool. okay yeah, so what, what, are, what are we doing what's the story like it was just like the camaraderie that existed especially with other girls i mean the, the locker room wasn't really big yeah but it was really really cool dude i will say that's one thing um that i think still stands at a is we've had we we have a good locker room mm -hmm. and we have girls like we have Paola that has like a year in you know sharing a locker room with Mickey 
sharing a locker room with us, sharing a locker room with um, with Jazz, with Medusa, and everybody. There's so much level of respect from everybody. Like everybody respects each other. I think it's fucking important. That's like the main thing. If you don't respect each other, then you know, no one's talking crazy to nobody. No one's doing shit because it's just not allowed. And if somebody is, if there is an issue, we're gonna address it. We've only had like one issue and it was addressed instantly. We're like, this is not happening. This is not, we don't do this here. You know, this last taping, we went out afterwards. We ended up, it was like a fucking Tuesday. Tuesday in Nashville. So it's not like we had much to do, but we're like, we're gonna go, we're gonna go have a few beers. And I feel like that's very, very important. Yeah, I miss, I miss that. I miss and we that miss problem. you, we miss you. We're really proud of you though. We're really Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. You've been killing it. Um, and I think for us, it's so cool to see, to see you win. Like, dude, you, you like I said, man, you, you've made history in more than one place. And we're yeah. proud of you. We're proud of you and we're, we're happy for you. And I know all of us are excited. Obviously we miss you and we had fun and you know, we had some great times and who knows where the story could have gone. Yours and Allison's match is still Hard times is still one of my favorite one of my favorite matches. Too. I told her that you know it meant so much to me what she did for me, right? And it was like, and it was a, such a selfless kind of like act. I remember putting the match together with her, Homicide and uh, Eddie. So, and he helped us out in both of our matches. And um, and just the fact that she trusted me too, you know, because it's like it is so important that like your predecessor has that trust in you and has that respect and it's like is it and then it's a real respect like we love it we love like beating the shit out of each mm -hmm. other anytime we have a, a chance but it's like i think that sometimes it's this line gets blur you know and like you can continue to tell stories for years to yeah come if that if that oh respect exists yes because i think the, the willingness to work together is there yeah you guys were both in there to make each other look good oh yeah and you did a great fuck. I'm telling you, that is still that match. Anytime we do an interview, gets brought up because it was so it was so special. And then, you know, we came back at um, at hard times, and we had a match at hard times too. But I don't think it's ever gonna touch Thunder Rosa versus Allison K at hard times. That was, I, and I know that I don't like to I don't like to speak for her, but I know that I can because I know that I know her. Allison, we're she gonna be loves that match. we're gonna be making some money pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share to my my vloggers, which almost, we're almost reaching 50,000 of you guys. Thank you so That's much awesome. for, it's been a lot of work, um, but. Thank yeah. you guys for the support. Um, those of you who know me, those of you who don't know me, um, I am Marty Bell. I am a part of <laughs> The Hex. I'm introducing myself again. I mean, just introduce myself. If you're just tuning in, this is uh, Marty Bell of The Hex. Um, cur current, <clears throat> One half of the NWA uh, women's uh, tag team, women's world, please, world, because we added some world title defenses. We oh, actually yeah, yeah. added when some international title defenses. So it's Europe. very, very important that we say world. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me on social media. Obviously, uh, I barely use Twitter. I only go, I only go on Twitter like every once in a while. Good. It's such a wasteland. Good. I can't. Good. It's such a wasteland. <laughs> I erase it. Everyone a, has an opinion. I Everybody erase it. Everybody has a, a dumb opinion. Like. I erase a thing and I like literally just go post, erase. It's, it's too much because otherwise I'd just be scrolling. You get lost. It's really interesting. Yeah, so I, I avoid Twitter as much as possible. Every once in a while I will jump on and just like, you know, see what people are doing, retweet it, like, retweet a few things and be like, peace, see you in two weeks. Uh, but I am very active on Instagram. By the way, I have to ask this question. Why do you always take a picture Standing on something, showing I have your no butt. Idea. Because I have a really nice butt. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. <laughs> I mean, no, but I'm like, check out my Patreon. Uh, I've been posting a lot of really like fun stuff lately. I've been I've been getting more into the vlogging as well. I'm a little vlogger now. I'm not a vlogger, but I've been I've been trying to do more of that. So check out my Patreon. It's patreoncom slash Um Maybe an OnlyFans someday. I don't know. We'll see. Not anytime soon, but who knows? But if not, Marty Bell's ass will be out there. Uh, I want to thank all my sponsors. Well, Modern Wellness Center. Make sure that uh, if you haven't subscribed to their page, subscribe. They still are doing the uh, giveaway. Uh, we're giving away really cool stuff, so I use them all, and they're great, and they're making me feel a lot better. Also, guys, we are. Um, this is the last week where you guys can bet money on the gear that I use in Double or Nothing. We are raising funds for the Uvalde families. I know. 
a lot of people are helping, but like the wrestling community, you know, is also helping too. Uh, all the information will be on down below. And um, am I missing something? Now I want to thank Marty Bell for being here today. I know she has better things than to eat tacos with Thunder Rosa. Are you kidding me? This is literally the highlight of my day, Thunder Rosa. But plus, I want you to subscribe to all her pages. She has a YouTube. Make sure you go and like her, subscribe, and everything, and make sure you get a, the little campanita so you know that she is on. And uh, I mean. Come check out El Gallo when you're, if you're yes. ever in Kansas City. Yes. It's and on Southwest Boulevard. This little strip right here has a bunch of really, really good food. This, um, the tacos here next door, they have mole enchiladas. Todo. Todo. De todo. This so is, this is where you want to come. Come hang out on Southwest. Make sure you hang out. And don't forget, every Tuesday we're having Taco Tuesday with Tandu Rosa, Taco Blog. And every Saturday, my blog. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe to uh, TandurosaOfficial.com. Instagram and we need to reach our 50,000 followers on YouTube. Don't be a jerk, tell your grandma to follow us. I know she's your grandma. Uh, I know she's watching this talk vlog. Uh, well, other than that, thank you so hi, much, abuelita. guys. Muchísimas gracias. La tiene representando en un lugar que es difícil, but it's not impossible. Again, we're representing. Difícil, pero no imposible. Exactly, exactly. We're doing everything we can to make a difference for the next generation of women's wrestlers. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. I am gonna go to fold the shower and stuff my face, and she's probably gonna go what? I'm gonna go sleep. No. I'm gonna go pack. Fuck. I have, I have, I have taping this weekend. I'm gonna go pack. Oh, and yeah. then sleep. Yes. Well, there you go. Take care, guys. A what? Pasta. Oh, pasta. Yeah. I love pasta. Pizza, pasta. pasta. Damn. I love pasta. I haven't, I haven't bought pasta. I paid for it every time. I was like, were you recording that? I'm not. What do you have?